Hello, everyone, and welcome to our NEO webinar for preparing for a new school year with the latest NEO updates. I am your host, Eve Sherman, and I am an EdTech specialist in North America. So a little bit about me, I'm a licensed educator, a volunteer youth crisis counselor, and I have a bachelor's and master's degree in both education from North Carolina State University. Um, and my passions include activism and advocacy for public education and social justice. So for those of you that might not know, NEO is a learning management system that makes it easy to create and manage all learning activities whether it's building online classes, assessing students, enhancing collaboration, or tracking achievement of any kind. So today, part of our webinar is going to be keeping the conversation alive on Twitter. We love to see your ideas and we love to see how you're utilizing Neo LMS. So feel free to tweet any inspirations, ideas, musing, or questions for reflection during and after our webinar by using the hashtag, hashtag NeoTalk. We can't wait to hear from you. So first I'd like to start off with a poll. Now I wanna know what you're hoping to gain from this webinar today so that we can get a better idea of what you came here for. So A, a clearer understanding of how to utilize best practices through NEO LMS. B, a chance to get the inside scoop on product updates. Or C, an opportunity to make connections with other educators. If you're like me, you'll probably say D, all of the above. So I'd love to hear from you in the chat and see how come we came here today. Okay, great. I see a lot of all of the above. Wonderful. All right, so it looks like most people are here for it all. So I'm really excited for us to get started. Hello. All right, so first we're going to start off with some App Center updates. So as you know, we utilize apps to extend the functionality of our learning management system. And these are different things that you can find within your App Center in Neo. So I'm going to stop sharing this slide and I'm going to move into our demonstration so I can show you a little bit about what we have to offer now and some new updates to our App Center. So as you can see now, we have our App Center page, which can be found under Admin and App Center. So now we're here with a new view of our apps. So something that we're really excited about is the fact that our App Center is actually now categorized by functionality and by category. So to get a better view of how we set this up and how we broke down these categories, you can look on this widget right here and you can break down the content that you're seeing by the category that it's placed in. So for example, let's say that you want to download something to help you with monitoring. If you check off monitoring, any app that's associated with monitoring will now come up in the system. This makes it so much easier for you um, to find what it is that you need in the App Center and to make the process of downloading these apps more efficient. You can also search different types of apps in the search bar. So for example, let's say that you want to search gamification, which I know is right there, but just to show you the functionality, you're able to install this app really easily by just typing it into the search bar here. Another update to our App Center is the Credly integration. 
So now we are proud to offer an integration with Credly, which is used often to make custom badges. So to issue Credly badges from Neo using automation, you first install the Credly app in the App Center. Then you create a site on Credly, which will give you access to both a sandbox and a live version of Credly. If you want to learn more about how to do that once you have your Credly account, you can easily search Credly in the Help Center, or you could look it up in the App Center, click Help, and then you will learn the process and how you will set up your connection through Credly. Once you do that, Credly badges are issued and the ones that are issued through Neo will show up in the Credly badges earner section, which would show up, let's say, if you had Credly installed, you'd be able to utilize that to give out any badges that you wanted or that you created. Another app that we are now supporting is Coursera. So Coursera is really cool because it's a tool that offers classes from a third party that you can integrate within your Neo LMS system. So this can be used to create another set of classes for your class catalogs. Once it's configured, when you go to your catalog, the Coursera classes that you provide will be synced into your Neo site for students to enroll in. More information about this can also be found in the Help Center or in the App Center. If you look up Help, you'll see a really detailed list of steps on how to incorporate Coursera into your catalog. If you would go to your course catalog then, it would actually show up so that you would have a tab that would say course era and you would be able to see those courses populated within your catalog. Now we're going to move on to <clears throat> updates to organizations. So to start, we're going to hover over organizations and we're going to go to our list. So as you can see, we have a list of organizations that are utilized within the system to separate different learners into, let's say, different sites or perhaps with different administrators. So now we actually offer top level and bottom level organizations. So this supports a hierarchy structure that will allow you to switch up the permissions and kind of manage the structure of how your students are engaging in a learning experience. So for example, ASF here is our default organization. This is located as a top level organization. So the people that are administrators in ASF have the permission to control or to manage what's going on in any bottom level organizations. So since school A is a sub organization of ASF, any administrators here would be able to manage what's going on in these organizations as well. This kind of helps you make your experience more efficient and helps you really categorize who you want to have what experience within NEO. As well, you can now add and delete organizations, but we made it a little bit easier for you. So previously, you could not delete an organization if it had any associated classes, groups, users, or resources in the organization's library, including those that were in the trash. But now we've simplified this process so that if you delete an organization that has any associated items, we provide a summary as well as drop downs to move those items to a different organization. So once you've moved them all to their desired locations, you can click try again and the delete will be complete. So I'll show you how that works. So let's say that we're going to delete the Sacramento Adult School, which as you can see has students, teachers, TAs, classes, etc. 
So this is something that you're not going to want to just disappear forever unless everything in it were to go too. So if we wanted to delete it, we could check it, click delete, then okay. And then as you'll see, instead of it just deleting, you now have a list of what's included in the Sacramento Adult School. You have the option with a drop-down menu now to include all of these things in another organization within your site. So for example, let's say that you wanted everything to move to ASF, you could utilize this drop-down, or if you want things to go to different places, perhaps your classes will actually move to organization A, you can set it up that way as well so that when you do successfully delete the organization and try again, you'll be able to actually find those courses and resources in a new place. Another update to our organizations is that you can actually manage your courses now from an organization page. So for example, if I'm clicking on one of my organizations, I can go to this left tab here, click on classes, and now I will only see classes associated with this organization. This is really just more of an efficient way for you as an administrator to be able to go into your organizations and see how your courses are being used, um, to be able to know where these courses land, um, and to just be able to kind of go in, publish, unpublish, lock or unlock, or, you know, check and see how things are going within that particular space. So this is a really efficient update and it can be used for any organization that has courses associated with it. So now we have some updates on mastery. So, We are trying really hard as an organization at Cypher Learning to make mastery a really core part of our system. We know how important it is to associate competencies and skills with either jobs or paths that learners will go through to become more efficient in whatever it is that they're striving for. And in a lot of cases in schools, we have our standards or our competencies that are associated with different courses or perhaps with the completion of a certain grade level. So we just released an important new feature that allows you to specify the mastery calculation rules that are used when calculating mastery values that are displayed in the home dashboard. So here in mastery, or in the profile mastery area. So each class can specify its own mastery calculation rules for calculating the mastery values within that class. And these values show up in the classes mastery and students tab. So I'll show you what that looks like first. So let's say that we're going into a class and we're going to mastery. So now we can see that we have a list of competencies here under mastery that have been associated with this particular course. So these are the standards or the competencies, and we can see how well they're being covered with this color indicator. If you click on options, you can set the rules for how your mastery is calculated for just your course. So this is not a site-wide mastery configuration. It is just within a course. So anything measured for mastery within this specific course can be configured here. Now you can even change the mappings. So you can, what I might do is change the names to maybe mastered, approaching and developing. You can change the colors and you can change the minimum threshold as well for how well your competencies are going to be covered and how you want that to be measured. However, 
the mastery widget. So now we're going back to the home page and the profile mastery area calculates the aggregate mastery values for a student and take into account all of the competency values regardless of which class they originate. So some might ask, well, you know, what happens if each class has a different set of mastery calculation rules, which should be used? So before this, we would pick one class that provides the competency values at random. This is clearly not ideal. So to address this issue, you can now set up a default mastery configuration that is used when calculating mastery whose competencies can come from multiple sources. To set this up, you would click admin, mastery, and then you can configure your site-wide um, desired settings for mastery. So this is for the entire site, not just a course. And you can add rules as well. So that let's say if you have a competency here and you can select certain standards or competencies, you can add an action that happens once that competency is mastered by a learner. So let's say that someone masters these competencies that I chose, you could award them a badge, let's say. So maybe you're doing this for a site-wide game and you want to award someone a gold star for achieving that competency and for mastering it. You can set that rule so that the learner that achieves it is now earning this badge that will go on their profile. As well, you can check to see on your own page or on the page of a learner in your mastery widget here, how well the competencies that are part of your goals as a learner are being covered. So as you can see for this person right now, they have 0%. They're not actually covering any of these standards or competencies yet. So hopefully when they do, they'll get a rating that shows exactly how much of them they've accomplished. So for example, it might be 95% or it might be 10%. It would give you a great way to be able to see that here. If you set up a mastery threshold value via the admin mastery, then we also display a separate mastered column in the dashboard for a competency group like you saw. So if this was mastered, it would show up as such as an indicator so that not only you would know um, if you've mastered that competency, but so that your administrator and your instructor would know too. So next we're going to move into classes. So I'm going to go back into a class and I'm gonna tell you about some exciting updates that we have here. So now something that I absolutely love is that in your calendar page for a course, let's say, we now support an agenda view. So as you can see, there aren't any um, assignments or events going on in this particular course. But if there were, Instead of it populating on a calendar that shows a month, let's say, or a week, there is now an agenda view that will show everything that you have going on for that course day by day. So if you had an assignment due, it would show up right here and you'd be able to link it and go to that particular assignment. So this is just a more efficient way of being able to look at what's going on in your schedule as a learner, a teacher, or even an administrator in the course. A couple of other things that we tweaked are the basic configurations of a course. So now the class and group admin tabs are now renamed to admin features. So this used to be called tabs, now is called features. We thought that that fit better for our use. 
So the Start Page tab is actually moved from Admin Basics to Features as well. So you can see here that any start pages that you have available to your learners or to you as an instructor can now be added and removed right here under features. So if you want to get rid of news, let's say, you now only have lessons and calendar available when you click start. Maybe you want to add a welcome page or perhaps a dashboard. Now you'll have access to a course dashboard, which gives you the look and feel that the site-wide dashboard might have, but specific to your course. I've come to find that a lot of educators really like to see all of their widgets here, giving them the analytics and um, the basic results and configurations of their course right here accessible to them. And they can edit this and make it look however it is they want it to. It's really customizable, as are most things within our system. We've also added a new automation action. Now, if you're like me, you love automation because it makes our lives more efficient as educators. We have so much to do that if something can be a little bit easier for us, the NEO team's going to try to make that happen for you. So what you can do, let's say, is when a course is finished, Maybe you want to add a rule that when the class is finished, so right when it's done, you now have the option to unpublish a class. So before, that was something that you would have to manually do. So if it's a class that finished, you don't want anyone to join it. You don't want people to see that it's still available because the course is over already. If you have it automated so that the course is unpublished right when it finishes, there's no more work for you after that. All you have to do is enable this. You can choose to send it to teachers and administrators or just teachers. And then you have that action set in place to take one thing off of your list for when you're finishing up the school year or wrapping up a particular course. As well, we now support, now let me get into a course with a quiz. So we now support multi-bank questions, which is really exciting because now you can use the resources that you have to make your life easier once again. So for example, as you can see in this test quiz, when I make a quiz, a test bank, I'm sorry, a quiz bank automatically populates right here. So once you start adding questions, you have now created your test quiz bank and you'll just use that in the future if you want to or not. Now, what we offer is for you to be able to add multiple question banks to your quizzes. So let's say that in the past, um, you really liked the questions that you put in this fourth grade grammar pretest. You wanna also use those questions in this quiz so you don't have to do it all over again, or you don't have to retype those questions. To submit a new question bank is to add the questions from this question bank here to your quiz. So now the quiz is populated with both the question bank here that you started with, which didn't have any questions yet, and then the one that you just added. If you want to change that, you can. And you can also view the question bank and configure the questions that have been available to you through this bank. Another update which is pretty exciting, is our grading updates. So let's say that you wanted to be able to look at the grades that you're, um, that you're utilizing for an assignment. What you can do when you're going to grade it is you'll have a drop-down menu now that will allow you to look up your learners. 
So if you click on this drop down menu, a whole list of your learners will show up so that you don't have to keep clicking next to see the rest of the learner submissions. You can also type in names so that the field will populate with the learners that are in your course that match with those names so that you can look up their submission and make your life a little bit easier in the grading process. We also support a new syncing feature. So if we click on a course template and we go to our sections. So this particular course is a template. It is a parent course. It has child courses, which are its different sections here. You can see now, which we didn't offer before, when the sections were last synced. So this will give you a good idea of when your last changes were made, how long ago you synced it, and what changes were reflected. So for example, if we were to sync our courses, there are no changes to sync, so it won't sync. But if we were to, it would show up here last synced at, and then it would say the date and the time that it was synced. So lastly, we have some group updates. So now we're here in a group which we're trying to make more consistent with the look and feel of our courses. So groups actually, um, they're, they're just a different feel. So they have a start tab, which they did not have before. The start tab can contain the news. Um, if you have a welcome tab set up, it will contain that as well. Calendar tab, which you can see here and we'll soon include a dashboard tab. So let's go to admin and features. Looks like we already have that dashboard tab configured, so that's exciting. You can click on it, and now you'll have a group dashboard, which sort of mimics that of a course, but it contains the data for that group. As well, we have a new type of um, role in a group. So as you can see now, we offer assistance. Now assistance did not exist in groups before, but they can be added as a role for any member of the group that can be configured by the administrator. So if I'm the administrator of this group, I can make another member an assistant to be able to help me in keeping the group engagement going, um, keeping the group motivated, maybe continuing discussion. Um, the assistant can moderate forums. They can upload resources. So it's a really cool new feature that we offer that we're excited to include. We also added under the admin tab, a catalog feature that allows you to publish your groups in a group course catalog. So let's say there's a group that you might want your learner to explore and decide to join if it seems interesting to them. You'd wanna publish that in the catalog here so that they can actually go view that group and possibly join. Let's say that there are groups you don't want everyone to join. Maybe this group is just for teachers. What you can do is you can set visibility so that only certain types of accounts or any sort of visibility features can be configured through the group. So maybe you only want teachers to be part of this group. It's for collaboration, maybe to discuss ways to help students. I've now set this visibility so that in the catalog, only people with teacher accounts can see the group. So I believe that is it for the demo portion of this. But before I send you off, 
have a little bit more to show you. One second, please. So now that we've gone over some of our newest updates, I'm curious to know which updates you're most excited to try out. So one more thing that I want to show you actually before I get to this poll that I almost forgot about and it's one of my favorite things is our new question types. So if you go to classes, let's go to a random class. And let's say that we want to include a survey. So I'll create the test survey. So now with our surveys, we actually support new question types. So we now have scales and matrices as part of our new update. So the scale is cool because it allows you to rate different things. Um, so for example, how well did this course teach you empathy? Let's say students or whoever's taking the quiz or the survey in this case can rate the course on a scale of anywhere from two to 10. So let's say that it's a scale from one to five and they can give it a certain number of stars. So this might be great for course reviews, um, perhaps for reflection on different assignments or learning paths even, and you can make it required or not. I'll show you what that looks like in a moment, but before I do, I'd like to show you the other type of question, which is a matrix question. So this will allow you to um, select choices from within an X by Y matrix, and I'll show you how that works. So how challenging was this course? Might be a question you'd ask. You can select it as a radio or a checkbox matrix. You might create one or two rows, depending on how you want it to look. I'll put it down as course difficulty. And then just to keep it simple for you all, I can select basic and challenging. So maybe two ends of a spectrum. And now I'm saving and returning to the question bank. So now to view this survey, I'm going to view it as a student. Oops, sorry, have to give it first. All right. Now it'll work. So I'll view it as a student. I'll take the survey. And now you can select a rating based off of the question. So how well did this course teach you empathy? I'll give myself a five out of five. And then for the other question with the matrix, I can determine whether this course was basic or challenging for me. So let's say it was really challenging. And those are the new question types. So now I'll go back to my poll. I appreciate you bearing with me. So now, which updates are you most excited to try out? Would it be scales and matrices, using the upgraded grading features, new group roles, or everything? Please feel free to write in the chat. Thank you all so much. Wonderful. I'm so happy to hear that. An emphasis on B. Thank you. So, 
Now, again, I would love for you to continue the engagement as much as possible. We love to hear your ideas and inspiration. So please feel free to tweet about what you learned today, whether it's now or in the future. You can use Neo Talk and we can discuss ideas through our professional learning network online. Um, and now if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. So can a teacher be an assistant? Yes, you can make a teacher an assistant as long as they are a member of your group. So if you add a teacher to a group, you can then make them an assistant as long as they're not already a group administrator. And then they can help you moderate the forum, upload resources, et cetera. And yes, you can use the survey for parents if you have, let's say, a site-wide survey or if you have the parent enrolled in a course. So if you have site-wide surveys configured, you can set it so that a parent account would be able to see it. Let me show you really quick. So it would just depend on if we have that. I don't believe we have it downloaded in this one. Let me check. Sorry, I'm logged in as another user. All right. So for the site-wide survey, You have to have it installed in the App Center. So if you type in even just site, it'll come up. You'll install it. And then it should come up under surveys. Then you can add a survey here that can be given to anyone that has a role within the site. So it doesn't have to be housed within a course, let's say. It can be something that's site-wide that would then pop up on the to-do list right here. So it would show up here and it would say site-wide survey and parents would also get a notification if you set it so that parents can take the survey. No, you do not have to pay extra for that. That will be included if you download it in the App Center. Yes, Susan. Absolutely, you can use groups for clubs and PTO. So when you're creating a group, you can make any group you want. It's really just a space for collaboration for really any users. And you can create a different type. So here you might put something like club or, um, I guess if it was the PTO, maybe you put topic and then you can specify that that would be PTO. You can make the group private, so it's just for you, or you can make it organizational, so for your particular organization or for the entire school. So it's something that anyone on those levels can join. Can all officers be an assistant? Yes, so if you wanted to make it so that there were multiple assistants, you'd be able to do that. And you could make as many people assistants as you want. It would just be a matter of how many people you want to be able to moderate the forum or to be able to upload resources. The new mastery calculation is available to the top level administrators. So an administrator that's within your default organization will be able to set the site-wide mastery um, configurations and values. Thank you so much for your questions. All right, are there any other questions before we wrap up our webinar today?
okay, in the new assignment view, can we manually add assignments or do we import them from various apps we use? You can do either one. So let's say that we want to just upload our own assignment. We can go to a course. We can either create an assignment from your assignments tab this way, or if you have an integration that you have set up, that would be set up here and you'd be able to import the content from that integration to an assignment. Or let's say if you already have the assignments created, you can utilize ones from your library. But what's cool is, Let's say that you want to create assignment through one of your providers. Like I said, you can go into any lesson. And then upload an assignment either through one of our tool providers or one that maybe you set up yourself. And through content. We also have our list of tool providers in our library that will allow you to sync your account from that provider to our system through an LTI integration. Thank you, Ms. Jana. So are you saying, Susan, if it was in the publisher's content already, then no, it's not going to pull or wait. Actually, if you upload it through a QTI, you can do that. So if you're able to download your questions from that other source and then upload them as a file, that actually will work. So you'll be able to have all those questions imported through that QTI. And support can definitely help anyone with that that might need some assistance. Thank you all so much. Thank you very much. So I appreciate everyone coming. That concludes our webinar and I hope you all have a great evening.